<laughs> Thank you for watching the sermon recorded live at City Church of the Treasure Coast. We are so happy that you're here. Before the message begins, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel so that you can get connected with our latest events and weekly sermons. If you feel like God has impressed it in your heart to invest in the mission here at City Church, please go to citychurchtreasurecoast.com forward slash give. Thank you again and God bless. Happy Mother's Day. We're going to dive into the word today. It's already been a great, great morning. Um, let's pray one more time. Father, let your word come alive today. We pray that wherever the moms, the dads, the kids, the grandkids, the grandparents are today, whatever experience we've had, whether it's been one where we would say our mom was the best ever or she hasn't been present, or maybe there's those here today, Lord, who've wanted to have a child that haven't, and maybe there's some here, Lord, who had way more kids than they thought they were going to have. Lord, this morning, wherever we are, find us there in your word. Meet not just our needs, God, but meet, Lord, with your love, with your care, with your healing, every single thing that we need today, Father. Be it for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if taken care of correctly, I don't know if you guys know this, but a goldfish will never stop growing. It will grow and grow and grow, and most fish are, in fact, what we know as indeterminate growers. Unlike humans, fish, a lot of them grow until they die. I don't know if you've seen these YouTube clips of guys holding these huge fish or ladies holding these huge fish. Or there was a, a show on TV which was hillbilly hand fishing or something like that, and they would pull this catfish out that was so huge. They will grow, and they will grow, and they will grow. Their environment is what limits their growth. And poor water quality or improper care are almost always the byproduct for a goldfish of a small tank. The environment of bad water causes the fish's growth to stunt or to stop. And stunted fish take on a deformed appearance and they die at a young age. And, or somebody swallows them in a contest. Do they still do that? Swallow goldfish in a contest? But because their environment is too small and their water, water quality is too poor, they are doomed. I want to ask you this morning, what environment what dream are you living in today? The poor water of our environment could be our thoughts or our habits or our actions or our words. The small tank could be a place in life where we feel hopeless, like we have no hope or no faith or maybe an abusive situation or no giving. Maybe there's obedience in our tank or in our environment. Obedience is the clean water for a dream to grow and grow and grow so we can release and unleash. How's our obedience today? How big is our tank, is our dream today? Moms and dads, we are the tank when a child is little. We are the environment. We are the filter. We are the water, whether it's clean or whether it's not. Philippians 4.19 says this, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. This is why we take heart today, because there is unlimited power, unrelenting love, and a fountain that never runs dry. And when I become a Christian, it becomes available to me. The price has already been paid by Jesus Christ. But many of us continue at times or all the time to live in a small tank, to live in a place of poor water, to live in the lack and in the little instead of walking in the light. What, what's your dream today? What is your dream? God's is bigger than yours. But what is your dream? There's a lot of dream killers out there that kill our environment, that kill our tank. Life has a way of cutting us off and twisting things up and even days like Mother's Day that should be a celebration become sad days and broken days and hurting days. Sometimes the devil will take this knowledge of Philippians 4.19, man, my God's going to meet all my needs, and twist it around to where we just say, you know what, I don't feel like life is worth going on. Sometimes our dreams become nightmares or they're overrun by sadness or our past or self-pity or circumstances. Listen, Israel knew this feeling. Israel had lost its dreams. The tank had gone from one that was unlimited to a tank of slavery in Egypt. 
They had no idea about a promised land, an environment that went on and on and on, a, a land flowing with milk and honey, a land with clean water. But God used dreams to save them as he still does today with Joseph. A lot of time has passed at what we're going to look at today. We're, we're going to look at the power of a mom of faith, of great faith, in the hall of faith. But time had passed between Joseph and the Hebrews. We find them here in Exodus, and they've been enslaved. They've become more hopeless. Their tank smaller and smaller and smaller. No room for growth as time was passing. And Egypt fears the possible dreams that the Israelites might have to be free. Uh, I'm sorry, Egypt fears their strength, their possible greatness. While they sit there and don't see any greatness for themselves, their very captors are afraid of them. And so Pharaoh decides to crush any possible dream, to remove all clean water, to remove all of the tank. And it says here in Exodus chapter 1, the Pharaoh says this to the midwives of Israel. When you are helping the Hebrew women during childbirth on the delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. And the midwives are faced with the same question that all of us face at some point in our lives. Will I believe in the plan that God has for me and my family? Will I believe in the plan that God has for my country? Will I believe in what God has for me when it comes to what I'm entrusted with? Or will I do what seems necessary just to survive? Will I give in? Will I compromise? Will I disobey, in the case of the midwives, Pharaoh, the king? It's certain death if they disobey him. Certain death on this earth. And the midwives say, oh, will I disobey God who says, thou shalt not kill. Which in their truth, in our truth, is eternal separation and death. What will they do? What will these moms that make moms do here in Exodus? Will they obey God and die here? Or will they live a slow death with no future. Verse 17, the midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. These are some heroes in the Bible. These are some brave women. Amen? They choose life, and they choose to live and trust God, and they made it possible for others to live and dream, but the attack isn't over. Verse 18, then the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and asked them, why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? So I don't know, you may be here today and say in my business, maybe it's not life and death like this is or murder like this is, but you may be here where you're in a place of a dilemma, of peril, of somebody wanting you to do something you know you should not do, a conundrum, a loss, and it's really hard to trust God, but you've got to stop and consider and stop and realize sometimes, sometimes that when we get into these life or death situations or these conundrums or these things that we go, man, how am I going to deal with this? Sometimes that's the perfect temperature that God wants to put you in for the recipe of the dream that he is cooking up for your life, a new dream, a new direction, a new tank, clean water. See, we go through the fire so we can burn brighter, amen? You will come out stronger and better, blessed, shining like a lighthouse in your city. And it says in verse 20, so God was kind to the midwives and the people increased and became even more numerous. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. So out of being ordered to become murderers of the most innocent of the innocent, a God-sized dream is fulfilled for the midwives. See, they get blessed out of the persecution. They do the right thing, and God gives them their dream. But God is not done with 
the dream, and therefore the opposition is going to dynamically increase and go up. I don't know what you're facing today. You do, but maybe you feel like it's increasing, and what you're facing is getting harder and harder and harder, and maybe it's a full-grown giant in your life. I don't know. But I know we can rejoice because when we face opposition, that means that there is a miracle coming. And these midwives who served in this role because they couldn't have families of their own, all of a sudden they had a miracle and God blessed them and gave them families of their own. But the opposition increases. If you've been a mom, you know that. The stakes get higher. The struggle's real. It gets harder. Verse 23, 22, I'm sorry. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Every Hebrew boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. Now, this is so sick, so twisted. It's a more creative way to accomplish the same evil goal, to kill the tank, to kill the dream, to kill an entire people's future even take their name from them. When they go in the Nile, they're going to meet some crocodiles really quickly here. But God had something better even in this. God had a promise. And we're here today with moms of promise. God had a promise. He'd already given it to him. Genesis 15, 5. God took Abram outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. And then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. God had already promised you're going to have more offspring. You're going to have more children. You're going to have more people than the stars that you can count, than the sand that you can count on the beach. You're going to have more. So there is no way for any man, woman, or anyone to cut off God's promise no matter what they try, no matter what evil, sick plan, no matter what kind of genocide tries to take place. God has a plan. And this plan for Israel, it includes a strong, God-fearing mom that is in our text today. This is who we want to get to. She knows the dream that God gave Abraham. And, and just like the midwives, she is going to dream bigger and believe God for a miracle. And what she does will bring hope to all of us, no matter where you are today. She could have given up, as everyone else was. But she is not giving up on God. I want to look in our last few minutes together at Moses' mother, Jochebed. And she shows us this first and foremost. When I release my dream to God, I can unleash the dream that I have for God. When I release the dream to God, I unleash the dream for God and from God that God has for me. Now, how do we release this dream? We have to do it by faith. We have to let go of our control, of our plan, and trust God for what we cannot see. And Moses' mom shows us this principle at work today, right here in the middle of our story, Exodus 2, verse 2. And she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. How do you hide a baby for three months? Now, if we jump ahead into the New Testament, we learn in Hebrews 11.23 that by faith, Jacob had hid Moses. By faith, faith in God, faith that he had made the covenant with Abraham to make them a country, a God-sized dream for a mom of promise. And we see here that Moses is no ordinary child. The Bible says that he was a fine child, a beautiful child. The same word from Genesis that when you study uh, scriptures is used when God created everything and he said it is good. It's the same word as is said here that this is a fine, very fine child. It's not used often in the Old Testament. Here's what I'm saying. Jacobed saw with the eyes of faith that there was something very special about her child. And she believes there's a dream, a big one, a big dream 
that this boy will fulfill. So by faith, she hides him for three months. And now the time comes that she can't do it anymore. I don't know how you keep a baby quiet for three months. Have you ever worked in a nursery for one hour? She risks her family. She risks her life. What would Pharaoh have done if he had found out he would have killed them all? She risks her very life, and by faith, she hides him. By faith, she hides him. By faith, she then, after she hides him, releases him. And she did not just release him, church. She released him and trusted God that God will make a way, that the dream will not die when she releases the dream. She risks her life, gives everything to hide Moses, and then releases it and trusts God with the very same thing she's risked her life to accomplish, to see her child grow up for a few months. She leaves him in the reeds and in the Nile and walks away. And she has to be devastated. Moms, can you imagine? Some of you can, some of you can 100%. Walking away, releasing control. Today we need to release something so we can unleash something, church. You need to put it down and walk away and then sit back and trust God and see what he will do. And I, I know this. In 2024, God will take you from devastated to a promised land if you will let him. He will take you from devastation to a promised land if you will let him. Back to the story, because even though mom has walked away, there's somebody still there. There's another future mom of promise, a family member, verse 4. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds, and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying. And another great mom in the Bible that we don't think about, which is this Egyptian princess. And she felt sorry for him. The heart and compassion of a mom that isn't even a blood relative to this baby. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Lots of theories as to why that happened. Some people say there was a blanket that she could tell was made by the Hebrew people, but by the way that it looked. But most likely it was because this baby's been set adrift in the Nile and all the males have been ordered to be killed. And the minute that she finds him, Pharaoh's daughter finds Moses. The minute she finds him, that should have been another death of a dream gone over we live in a violent world today but this world was even more violent i mean the flood came because of the violence and wickedness of men that's the one thing god pointed out was man there's violence everywhere this was a violent time we don't know much about this daughter of pharaoh but we know this she now holds the power of a released dream a human being a baby boy in her hands and god gives her a deep compassion for this child that was supposed to be murdered and it's so deep that she defies her father she defies the king in fact god is using a bunch of people standing up to this murderous pharaoh to defy evil to put moses and the israelites right where they need to be so they can get to the promised land verse seven then his sister <laughs> sister's right there right she's hanging out she comes walking up on the scene. She sees everything that's happening. She, I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine like, oh, no, Pharaoh's daughter found him. What's going to happen? She comes walking up. The Lord guides her steps. She'll spend um, her life serving in ministry with Moses. And it says, then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother that just happened to be the girl's mother too. And I want you moms, dads, kids, I want you to put yourself emotionally into that room that Jacobed has been broken in. We don't know if it was minutes, an hour, a couple hours. We just don't know. 
But I want you to put yourself in that room where she is on the floor, devastated that she has released her child, that she went against her entire law, risked her life to save for three months, and she's released the child, and she has to believe a part of her, even though we know she's a woman of faith, as she's listed there in Hebrews, she must be thinking it's over, the dream is dead, the tank is gone, the environment is gone, everything's over, there's no way to grow from here. She's let her dream go to certain peril, let alone just the the crocodiles playing, uh, you know, air hockey with the baby on the Nile. Or maybe, or maybe even in these moments, as broken as she was, she was still standing in faith on firm ground on the dream. And her daughter comes back and says, come with me. Moses is alive. God's made a way. And Jacobed comes and she walks into the presence of Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter is holding her son, that fine child, this beautiful child, her Moses, her child. And she can't speak because she's got to feel like I can't feel my legs, like she's walking in a dream and her heart is racing and her blood's got to be pumping and she can't wait to hold him again, but she can't run over and grab him away from Pharaoh's daughter. She held him close for months. She nursed him. Can you imagine mom's a promise? Can you imagine? It says verse 9, Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. A promised child in a promised land. And moms and dads and kids and grandkids and grandparents, there's no words for Jacobed to say. She, she's been devastated and elated all in one day. She holds the dream again in her hands that she released, that she let go of, and She doesn't know that this is just a piece of God's beautiful plan. She's speechless. Her eyes have got to be filled with tears as she walks away in awe of what just happened, holding the released dream now unleashed into her arms, into her bosom again. And the word says, so the woman took the baby and nursed him. Moms, God will restore your promised land to you and he will bless you beyond your dreams. Somebody say amen. This is a simple point. She not only gets Moses back for about three years. She released him and thought he was gone for good. She not, and she would have been okay just to know that he was okay. Do you understand? She not only gets Moses back for three years, but she gets paid to be his mom. <laughs> And if you've had a baby, you know that those three years, three months, three years and three months are critical years of learning and living and loving. There's studies coming out now that say that so much of who a child is actually develops in the womb. And especially the studies have always said in those first years. And Jacobed knows that through it all, she already knows that through it all, she's going to be releasing this dream again. She's thankful for the time, but she knows she'll have to give him away again, but this time not to the crocodiles of the Nile, but to the royal palace to be a son of Pharaoh's court. She also knows the power of every moment. So she's not brokenhearted. She's filled with faith and life and expectation of the deliverance to come by God through this fine child that God gave her and saved. Listen, church, I want you to hear this. God is not only going to restore your dream to you, he'll clean your water, he'll expand your tank, and he will bless you beyond your dreams, beyond what you can ask or imagine, the word says. Deuteronomy 32 through 3, and when you and your children return to the Lord your God and obey him with all your heart and with all your soul, according to everything I command you today, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have compassion on you And gather you again from all the nations where he scattered you. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word. So City Church, friends, visitors, 
folks watching online all over the world right now, how big is your tank? Obedience is the environment. Dr. Bed shows it to us that we need to live and move and so that our dream can grow and flourish and be healthy and never stop growing. Here's what I'm saying today. Dreams are like goldfish. And obedience is the water and the tank you put the dream in. Now, the goldfish usually doesn't have a choice. Hello, go to PetSmart. You do have a choice. Pray and obey and obey. And your water will be clean and your tank will be big. And if you will drop the limitations and the hesitations, then a promised land will flow into your life. A city of dreams will flow into your life. If you obey God in your giving and your living, you will have the God-sized resources, just like Jochebed did, to see the dream that God has for your life. If we'll listen and learn to listen to God, we'll see the promised land. One more thing. Moms, dads, kids, grandparents, will you release today not your literal baby, but will you release your baby? I've heard people say it about a car. I've heard people say it about their house. I've heard them say it about, okay, that's my baby, their prized possession. Will you release your baby, your dream, your basket to God and trust him today by faith? Maybe your basket has your past in it today and you need to just release it to God. Maybe a basket has your finances in it, you need to release it to God. Maybe it has your marriage in it, you need to release it to God. Maybe it has your kids just like Jacobet, I don't know. And you need to release it to God. But will you release it by faith and trust God? Or will you spend your life trying to hold on to everything? Let's bow our heads, let's close our eyes, let's pray this morning. Lord, help us this morning to trust you by faith to release our basket to release our dream. God, help us by faith to trust you in all of it, Lord. Help us to dream again. Help us, God, to obey. Lord, I know there's many here this morning that are downhearted, that feel that Jacobed moment where they've released the dream or something's been gone. It hasn't been a day, but it's been 10 years or it's been 10 weeks or 10 months, and it feels like it's gone. It feels like it's afloat. It feels like there's crocodiles everywhere. There's certain destruction. But God, I pray today that as we release our dream to you, we pray by faith that you will encourage our hearts, that you are a God that keeps his promise. I thank you this morning for moms of promise that have sacrificed and given and loved and continue to love and continue to give sacrificially over and over and over again to put their kids first. But Lord, today we want to put you first. Knowing that all your promises are true. You promised us hope in a future, God, and you promised us, Father, that you'd never leave or forsake us. And you promised us this morning that you'll meet every need according to your riches and glory. Help us, Lord, today to release the basket of our past, to release the basket of hurts, habits, and hang-ups, to release the basket of even relationships that are toxic or, or, or we've been severed from. They're not toxic with us, but somebody else doesn't want to be around us. Help us to release that, God. And then I pray, Father, you would take it as we obey and pray and do a miracle and have reconciliation and restoration and healing and even get paid for it, Lord. Help us, Lord, in areas of our lives where mom has hurt us or left us to forgive her. And help us, Lord, to love one another. If that's you, if you're here this morning and you need to release your basket to God, you know what's in it, I don't know. God knows, but I don't know. Will you just do that right now in this time of closing prayer? Will you just release that to God? Just say, Lord, I release it to you. I release the past. God, I, I ask you to forgive my sin, Lord. 
I release those bad decisions. Father, help me, carry me, walk me through the journey to release the abuse that I've suffered in my past today, Lord. Come at me from every direction, Father, to bring healing today. And Lord, I thank you and I pray your abundant blessing on every person here, but especially today on Mother's Day. We pray your abundant blessing on the moms of promise that are here, Lord. Again, we pray for reconciliation with kids for reconciliation with grandkids, for reconciliation with brothers and sisters, with family, that there would be reconciliation today so that we can enter into the promised land that you have for us. And all God's people said, amen. God bless you guys. We've got uh, some stuff going on in the cafe after service today. It's going to be a great week. Amazing things happening as we continue this series, Promised Land. But make sure if your mama wasn't here to give her a call, to reach out, to let her know you love her. God bless you guys and have a great Sunday.